In a span of just over a month, three Korean pop culture stars lost their lives this year. The deaths of actor Young Che Yul on April 11th, Moonbin on April 19th, and Haisu on May 15th sent shockwaves not just in South Korea, but around the world. These deaths are only new additions in a longer series that includes the passing away of Yu Ju Yun in August 2022, Gu Hara in November 2019, Sully in October 2019, and Kim Jong Hyun in December 2017. The other shocking aspect to these deaths, besides the sheer number of them, is that they either died of suicide or are speculated to have. Sully, a former member of girl group FX, had faced cyberbullying throughout her career. Her close friend Guhara had previously revealed in a video that she was suffering from depression. In a note shared a day before his death, Kim Jong Hyun had said he felt broken from inside, and that the depression that gnawed on me slowly has finally engulfed me entirely, adding that he couldn't defeat it anymore. These tragic incidents have once again put the spotlight on the dark side of the K-pop world and the Korean entertainment industry, and it needs some serious conversations around it. South Korea has the highest suicide rate in the developed world. And even though that rate is coming down, suicide cases among people in their 20s are increasing in the country. And being a celebrity in South Korea means they would be under much higher pressure compared to pop stars in North America or Europe. Entertainment is a highly popular career choice for aspiring young Koreans. A survey done by the South Korean Education Ministry in 2021 showed actors, models, and singers were among the top 10 dream jobs for primary school pupils. The competition in this industry is fierce from the beginning. To be a K-pop star, most people need to go through a stringent training period, which means they will largely lose connections with their friends and peers, and this could last for years. As per reports, a K-pop star works for an average of 16 hours a day, doing everything from dance practices and singing lessons to language classes and camera training. In the case of Moonbin, despite already having been a child actor in the Asia-wide popular Korean drama series Boys Over Flowers at the age of 11, he still needed to train for eight years before making his debut as a member of the idol group Astro. His sister, Moon Sua, also a K-pop singer with girl band Billy, spent 12 years preparing. After numerous intense rounds of selection, only a small number of trainees make it to the stage. And what awaits them is an industry that's already overwhelmed with stars, and a system which controls their lives from there on. This control is from celebrities' agencies and fan culture, and is a primary contributor to the massive stress that Korean stars face. It used to be a common case that new stars would be tied into so-called slave contracts, long exclusive deals with little control of their schedule or financial reward. These arrangements are inherently exploitative in nature, as idols are bound by these contracts to keep a specific weight, wear specific attire, and always appear flawless. K-pop artist Amber Liu opened up about the intense industry pressure in 2020. She told CBS Mornings, If you aren't under a certain weight, you can definitely get cut. You're told what to do, what to say, what to think. In fact, many K-pop stars have claimed so far that they are often only given access to their personal phones after achieving first position in a music competition. The girl group GF Friends said in 2016 on the program Immortal Songs, Singing the Legend, that they only recently acquired personal phones after winning a music competition. Tiffany Young, a former member of SNSD who is currently working alone, also revealed on The Zack Sang Show in 2018 that none of the other members had smartphones when the project first began, so she had to step outside to a phone booth to call her parents in the U.S. from abroad. While some K-pop stars have won cases freeing them from unreasonable contracts in recent years, the relationship between the two parties hasn't fundamentally changed much. On the other hand, the enthusiasm from the fans, amplified by the country's extremely active social media, could be a double-edged sword sometimes. Rob Schwartz, Asia correspondent for Billboard magazine, says of the fans, They pay attention to every move. They comment on their hair. It's crazy how they have these guys under a microscope. Once they have debuted, celebrities are not only closely watched by their fans, but by the whole of society. In a country where disparity has long been a talking point, being a public figure means higher standards expected by the public. South Korea has fandoms, or organized groups of admirers who spend time and money to prop up their favorite stars and target their opponents. The stars, in return, have to maintain their perfectly crafted image. 
Korea has a very strict moral standard for celebrities compared to other countries. Korean pop culture critic Ha Jae Kun told BBC, If a star behaves only a little differently from what's perceived decent, the public would attack them. And it's hard for a star to ignore this kind of assault because of the high social pressure from strong collectivism. In South Korea, every move by a star is closely watched by everyone, especially the fans. Drug use or drunken driving can instantly end careers in the industry. Prominent actress Kim Se-ron, 22, faced huge backlash from the public after crashing her car while drunk driving. While the stigma around mental health is not limited to South Korea, the added pressure from the country's entertainment industry has made matters worse for its young celebrities. Speaking of the same, Royce Lee, an associate professor of psychiatry and behavioral neuroscience at the University of Chicago, said, When talking about celebrities, the intersection of culture and psychology becomes very important. The idea that one must please everybody is both a very Korean idea and a very common problem with fame. So it is a double whammy. It is believed that artists are hesitant to approach mental health professionals due to fear of public shame and also because of their hectic schedules. Addressing the shame aspect, Liu, a former bandmate of Sully, had said, When people hear you're getting help, they're like, what? Why are you getting help? That's weird. Some K-pop idols have been taking long breaks for well-being reasons. Zhang Yan, member of top girl group TWICE, has taken four rounds of breaks since 2020 due to mental health issues and a neck injury. She made her comeback last month. Moonbin also went on hiatus in 2019 and 2020, citing health reasons. Multiple agencies also have introduced therapy sessions for trainees and celebrities. Naver, the biggest search engine in South Korea, shut down the comment section under its entertainment news in 2020, recognizing how potentially toxic the environment had become. But the problem of stigmatization continues to persist, and not many are hopeful of seeing a momentum of fundamental change coming soon. Kim Dae-oh, who has reported on 30 suicides within the K-pop industry, had said that, the South Korea's entertainment industry itself has to bear a lot of the responsibility. It treats celebrities as commodities from whom a few powerful agencies can squeeze as much income in as short a time as possible. Many celebrities are spotted as children and are not taught valuable life skills, only how to sing and dance. The situation is worse for female celebrities, with the public more interested in every salacious detail of their lives. While no passing from any artist is ever to be expected, Moonbin's untimely passing was all the more shocking given how active the young star was, even in the week of his death. No one around him saw this coming, but what we can keep is his undeniable smile, says Jeff Benjamin, a K-pop journalist. Indeed, the glitter of the entertainment industry can conceal the pain behind the smiles of our favorite stars. We never quite know what these artists go through behind the scenes, and the weight of our own expectations from them does not make it any easier for them. Therefore, it is upon us to question the culture that fosters such a system where the artist has to live with their emotion, away from the millions of eyes that follow them. And we have to do so before it is too late for someone out there.